The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. Dusty Baker's San Francisco Giants are one of baseball's early surprises. Even though Barry Bonds is off to a slow start offensively, newcomer Jeff Kent has picked up the slack. And with Rod Beck leading both leagues in saves, the Giants have won nine straight. Braves Giants next. team off to a better start than the Atlanta Braves this season is the San Francisco Giants. And tonight the Braves and Giants hook up in the first of a two-game series from 3Com Park. Hi everybody, Pete Van Wern along with Joe Simpson welcoming you to San Francisco where one of the real surprise stories in baseball has been going on this year. The unbelievably hot San Francisco Giants, Joe. Pete, they've won nine in a row and if you ask Dusty Baker why, he'll tell you it's their defense. This ball club made 33 errors in 30 games in spring training, but they've worked real hard to improve on that and in fact now find themselves second in the National League in defense. They've only committed nine errors. That's covering up any mistakes the pitching makes, but the pitching is not making many mistakes. Their team ERA now third best in the National League. That's a notch better than the Atlanta Braves. They're not scoring a lot of runs, but the combination of good defense, good pitching, Sounds like a familiar formula for success, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. And their bullpen's been a very, very successful part of their story as well. Greg Maddox back in the rotation tonight after missing his last start. He'll be opposed by right-hander William Van Landingham. And we'll be back with the lineups and all the action from San Francisco right after this. Go back in the lineup. Mark Lemke at second base, bat sixth tonight in the bottom third of the order. Eddie Perez, Jeff Flauser, and Greg Maddox. For the San Francisco Giants in the outfield, Bonds, Stan Javier, who's playing for the injured Daryl Hamilton. He injured his thumb on a slide, so he's on the disabled list for a couple of weeks. Glenn Allen Hill's been red hot in right field. Now then, here comes the news for the Giants. An entire change on the infield with Lewis, Viscaino, Kent, and Snow all coming to this ball club for the first year and playing great defense despite having never played before together. Damon Berryhill, the former Brave, will be behind the plate. He missed all of last year with a, uh, an elbow surgery. And on the mound, William Van Landingham, who's off to a good start. His first two starts of the year, he's 1-0, a three-point ERA. He is 0-1 lifetime against the Braves. But in this ballpark, he has always been mighty tough. 13 and 9 lifetime at 3Com Park. And he'll be facing Kenny Lofton to start things and beat a lot of rain in the forecast. Hopefully, we'll get this one in tonight. Yeah, neither team took batting practice tonight. They had the field covered, anticipating some rains moving in, but so far, so good. Temperature at game time is 60 degrees. And here is the National League Player of the Week, Kenny Lofton, hitting 443 for the year. And he takes his strike for underway. Lofton, during the week, it's 621. He was 18 for 29, six RBIs, five stolen bases, and he scored 14 runs. One ball, one strike. Michael Tucker will follow, and then Chipper Jones. Van Landingham's 1 1 delivery. Off speed, and Lofton out in front, 1 and 2. Well, they're going to try to mix it up on him, and for good reason, the way he's been swinging the bat, especially after that first series in Houston. He has been incredible. They've got to find out a way to get him out. Colorado never did. Here's the one-two on the way, and there's a line drive left field. Fair ball headed toward the left field bullpen. Lofton heads for second, and he'll be leading off another game with another base hit, this time a double. Patented inside out swing, that little lob shot to left that we've seen so often from Kenny Lofton. And watch where this pitch is, Pete. It's down and away. He's got the plate guarded, and that ball, that ball's a ball off the plate. That's not going to come back and get the plate. He didn't want to take a chance and just slapped it over third base. So after being named the National League Player of the Week for last week, he gets this week off to a pretty good start with a leadoff double. Now Michael Tucker for Lofton, by the way, his fourth double of the year. 
Michael Tucker has been equally hot. 377, a home run, 15 RBIs, 13 of them coming in his last six games. quickly back in and the table setters for Atlanta are at it again first and third nobody out here in the top of the first that gives Tucker a seven game hitting streak and Kenny Lofton had to wait to make sure this line drive was going to go through it was a low line drive good extension for Michael and that's why Lofton couldn't score Glenn Allen Hill also on right field with a pretty good throwing arm one of the things about this giant crowd though Pete maybe some disappointment best record in baseball They've drawn fewer people to this point than they did last year. Yeah, they're only averaging about 14,000 a game here at home. That was after a big opening day crowd of 40 some thousand. Here's Chipper Jones, 339 for the year, with a couple of homers, 15 RBIs. And an RBI opportunity here. Runners first and third, nobody out. Dusty Baker, great proud of what his team's doing because nobody gave them much thought when they were trying to pick their finishers in the National League West and who would be at the top. This good start has helped their confidence. Now in fact in all of the every virtually every one of the preseason publications and prognostications the Giants were picked to finish dead last in their division. Nobody picked them to be a contender. Here's the 1 0 2 0 and you can see you can see how difficult it would be to handicap this ball club with all the changes they've made. An entirely new infield, a lot of new members in their pitching staff, especially in their bullpen, setting up for Rod Beck. Odd thing about Kent and Viscaino up the middle is that they have played together not only in New York, but in Cleveland and now San Francisco. So they are at least familiar with each other up the middle. Back safely, Tucker. And they've got a gold glover there in J.T. Snow at first base. Back to back gold gloves for him while with the Anaheim Angels. Landingham wants a new baseball. Mark Lewis at third base was talking about how you make a good play on the infield somewhere, and if you have to make a wild throw, you really have a lot of confidence knowing there's a guy over there who can catch just about anything you throw at him. 2 0, the count of Chipper Jones, the runners lead. Tucker off first, Lofton off third. Again to first goes Van Landingham. Again, Tucker back. Van Landingham out of the University of Kentucky. It was 9 and 14 for the Giants last year with a 5.40 ERA. Here's the 2-0 pitch high in the air, deep enough to left field to get the run home. Bonds backing up on the edge of the track. He's got it. Kenny Lofton will score with no throw. And the Braves are on the board, 1-0. RBI for Chipper Jones is 16th of the year. Scored. The Giants try real hard to cut innings down as much as they can. And that's why you saw Bonds immediately throw the ball into second base, keep the double play in order, and hope to get out of the inning having allowed only one run. Good play. One out, Tucker at first for Fred McGriff hitting 314, 0 for his last seven. Takes the fastball upstairs, one ball, no strikes. And Landingham, not an overpowering pitcher. He's got a fastball in the high 80s. Pretty good breaking ball, good changeup. He's got a good slow curve. That's what Lofton slapped the left. This one misses outside. 2 0, the count now on Fred McGriff. But the thing right now, Pete, that's presenting some problems for opponents are how many left handers the Braves can run out there at you with Lofton and Tucker at the top of the order. Let's go back in there tonight. Here's the 2-0 on the way, and it misses low ball three. Brian Fesco waiting on deck. Mark Lemke moved up to the number six spot in the order tonight. He'll follow Fesco. McGriff, two out of five lifetime against Van Landingham, one of only four hitters in the Braves lineup tonight who has faced Van Landingham before. Four 
four straight. McGriff draws a walk. That'll send Tucker down to second. So the inning off to a bit of a shaky start for Van Landingham. Runners first and second one out now for Ryan Klesko. Bobby says Ryan's back's okay. It's something that he battles all the time and it was just too much for him to try to go Sunday in Colorado but feels a lot better today. I, I would guess that Ryan would have liked to have taken batting practice today and I would think that he got a few swings. They do have a cage under the stadium here and I'm sure he tried to get loosened up before the game started that way. And you know the back had to be bothering him on Sunday because to ask out of a lineup at Coors Field oh. for a hitter <laughs> is very very difficult task. First and second one out one run in. Into right field that's a base hit Tucker will get the green light around third Glenn Allen Hill comes up throwing back to the middle of the infield it's two nothing Atlanta. Ryan Plesko driving in his 10th run of the year. I guess that'll make you feel better too. Michael Tucker did not hesitate on this line drive. He went right on the crack of the bat and assumed it was going in the hole and it did and he scored easily. Fred McGriff on the other hand had to wait. So the Braves doing what they have done so well this year stringing together base hits not waiting for that three run homer and they've got two runs on the board on three hits in the first inning runners first and second still only one out here's Lemke marketing 235 in the year a five ball one The 1 0 pitch on the way. Lumpy takes a strike inside corner. One ball, one strike. The media here in San Francisco trying to not get overly excited about the Giants 13 and 3 start, keeping in mind that all of that has come against the Pirates, the Mets, and the Phillies. But then they swept the Florida Marlins over the yeah. weekend, and that got everybody's attention. And it was the way they did it, too, with some late inning heroics. Here's the 1 1. 2 and 1 to count. Glenn Allen Hill had a pretty good streak where he had. Three straight games getting either a tying hit or a winning hit in their last at bat. And they've been doing a great job of coming from behind. Dick Cole, the pitching coach, out to the mound. Dusty Baker has also reconstructed his coaching yes. staff this year. He's got Ron Paranoski now in the dugout sitting alongside him. Gene Kleins added to the ball club as the hitting coach. And a longtime member of the Braves organization, Sonny Jackson. Will be out there in the bottom half of the first inning as the Giants' new third base coach. Yeah, he was. This is his second year with the Giants. Dusty feels like he robbed the Braves to get Sonny, and is thrilled to have him. And he attributes a lot of their defensive success to him. Matt Landingham set to go back to work. Two-one pitch to Lemke misses low ball three. Wendell Kim, the longtime third base coach here, is now working for Jimmy Williams up in Boston. The Red Sox, by the way, got a win from Steve Avery today. Red Sox beat Cleveland eight to two with Avery the winner. It's funny watching Steve Avery pitch to David Justice. Looked like it? an inter-squad game. <laughs> Here's the 3-1 now to Lemke, and he walks in. That loads him up for Eddie Perez. He'd only walked five batters in his first 12 innings. So this is highly unusual for Mr. Van Landingham. And Perez has a chance to blow it wide open. Lemke at first, Klesko at second, McGriff at third. Still only one out, Eddie. Off to a little bit of a slow start with bat this year. He's just one for 13. And we're going to get some bullpen activity right off the bat here for the Giants. Big swing by Perez comes up empty 0 1. Joe Roa begins to loosen up now in the Giants bullpen. He too was a member of the Braves organization at one time. Here's the 0-1 to Perez. Low, good block by Damon Berryhill. One ball, one strike. We're talking so much about the Giants' success here early, Pete. I don't think anybody like the San Francisco media is trying to make them out as the Western Division champions already. But again, when you got a lot of new faces and you got some young guys on your ball club, what a good start is so important. To gain some confidence early, make you realize you can play. Inside corner, good pitch there from Van Landingham. It's one and two now, and Eddie Perez. 
Two runs in, bases loaded, still only one out. Hard to improve on that. Here's the one two on the way. Popped him up foul territory. A lot of foul ground here at Three Com Park and JT Snow. Coming up with it right down near the Giants bullpen. And that's out number two. And now Van Landingham with a chance to get out of this with only the two runs scoring if he can get Jeff Blauser. Who comes in at 397 with a couple of homers and 10 RBIs. Takes up high ball one. Jeff actually fifth in the yep. National League in hitting. Kenny Lofton is second. Walker, Lofton, Tony Gwynn. Imagine that. What a surprise. Deion Sanders is fourth. Here's the 1-0. Upstairs again, ball two to Jeff Blauser. Eighth man to bat here in the top of the first. Strike zone gets a little smaller right here for Blauser. He shrinks it, makes sure that Van Landingham gives him something he wants to hit. A lot of room for him in left center. There's a strike of the count two and one. Good pitch. Dusty Baker talking about Blauser before the game. He's always been one of Jeff's biggest fans and talking about how well when everybody else thought Jeff might be done. He said, look at him now. Dusty predicted long time ago that Jeff Blauser might win a batting title someday. He's always been one of Dusty's favorites. Two and two on Jeff Blauser. A lot of people trying to make something out of it, Pete, that Jeff's contract is up this year, and that's why he's motivated. Anybody that knows him knows that that is complete hogwash. Got a lot of pride. He plays hard, and he's trying to overturn what have been a tough couple of years. 2-2 pitch, ground ball, left side. Fielded on a bad hop by Lewis. He goes to second in time to get Limpy. Mark Lewis taking care of that bad hop. And Van Landingham gets out of the inning with only the two runs scoring. Braves leave him loaded, but lead 2-0 as we go to the bottom of the first. I helped my dad build this place. Well, help. <laughs> I was so small I could barely swing the hammer. But he taught me a lot about tools. He used to say, you can buy cheap tools every couple of years. Or you can buy Stanley once. Since 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut has been helping people do things right. Stanley. I even take my tape roll fishing. Well, that way I'll know how big a story to tell. When Dr. Stanley Pearl first opened Pearl Vision, he believed in offering real value to the customer. To keep that tradition alive, we're having our... Tucker, Jones, Blauser, Lemke, and McGriff third to first. Eddie Perez will do the catching, and we'll all be interested to know how Greg Maddox feels tonight after missing a start with a strain right hamstring. He makes his first start in 10 days. An excellent ERA. In fact, he has not allowed an earned run in his last 18 innings pitched. He is 14-10 and 10 lifetime against the Giants, but only 6-7 and seven here in this ballpark. And leading it off for the Giants will be center fielder Stan Javier hitting 211. With no homers or RBIs yet. He'll be followed by Jose Vizcaino and then Barry Bonds. Pretty nice to have a guy like this in reserve after Hamilton went down with that injury. Yeah, Hamilton, one of the better leadoff hitters around over in the American League, and he'll be a big plus to this lineup when he gets back in a couple of weeks. Maddox delivers his first pitch to Javier, and it's fouled away in the count on one. Greg answering a question about did he think he might feel a little bit stronger after not having pitched in 10 days. Said, well, even if I do and I throw my fastball a couple of miles an hour faster, it still won't top 90. He's very, very modest <laughs> about his ability. <laughs> the 0-1 on the way. 
Sawed him off. Little two hopper to third. Chipper Jones across the first one down. Well, one of the things to watch about Maddox tonight, and I was talking to Don about this, and he talked about his experience pitching in Candlestick Park, about how the ball moves better here, Pete, than in any other park he pitched in. And with Maddox having thrown on the side in Colorado where the ball moves very little, you come into this game and suddenly a ball that you think is going to stay inside comes over to the heart of the plate. So let's watch his location closely. Viscaino takes ball one, hitting 281. He has a five game hitting streak. Only three for 19 lifetime against Maddox. Here's the 1 0 pitch. On the ground to short. Blouser across the first two down. And a good start for Maddox here in the bottom half of the first inning. And now Barry Bonds. And one of the remarkable things about the start the Giants have had this year, you would assume 16 games into the season that the Giants are 13 and 3 like they are now, that this guy would be off to a great start, and he's not. He's hitting just 250. He has just one homer. He has just six RBIs. He has no RBIs in his last seven games. They've pitched around him a lot. He's tied for the league lead in walks. He's walked 22 times and takes ball one here. Yeah, and a non base percentage of 500 because they're not pitching to him. Now the 1 0 on the way. Line. Nice grab by the second baseman, but the shortstop, Jeff Blauser, playing over on the second base side. The overshift takes a base hit away from Barry Bonds and a 1 2 3 inning for Greg Maddox. 2 0 Atlanta as we go to the second. Rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. 2 0 Atlanta as we go to the top of the second. Pitcher Greg Maddox, 0 for 6 on the year, will lead things off. Van Landingham trying to settle down now after a shaky first inning. Owen won the count and Greg. Ben Landingham throws across his body quite severely. It can develop, or that can create a lot more spin on your breaking ball, but a lot more torque on your shoulder, too. On the ground is short, Viscaino. On the first, one down. And we'll go back to the top of the order now. Kenny Lofton will give Maddox time to get back in the Atlanta dugout. Lofton got it going again in the first inning, a leadoff double. And came around to score the first of two Atlanta runs. He was a player of the week, Pete, but he, he had a week's worth of hits in the Colorado series alone. In fact, more than that. He had nine hits in those three games and 15 at bats. He has 31 hits in his last 54 at bats. You go 31 for 100, you're batting 310. <laughs> Good point. Boy. He takes the pitch low, ball one. Slapped the breaking ball on an 0. What was it? One and two. The count. One and two. Yeah. To left field. So maybe they're going to see if they can handle some hard stuff this time. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way. Off the end of the bat. Foul. One ball. One strike. It's such a great advantage for him because he can bunt to have that third baseman constantly creeping in where he can cut down on the reaction time by slapping it that way. the one one good pitch breaking ball outside corner one and two the one two pitch on the way low and inside two balls two strikes look at all the hits to left field As soon as you start playing him constantly to left, he'll drill you to right like he did in Colorado yes. for the triple to right field. If you make a mistake. Has a couple of home runs this year. Both of those have come to left field. Anything a little bit above the belt, he drives. Mm -hmm. Here's the 2 2 on the way. Little ground ball to the right side. Snow's going to have to hurry, but he gets him.
Good play by J.T. Snow. I think if he tries to run to the bag, it might have been a foot race, and he might have lost that one. So he just went right after the runner and applied the tag. Yeah, he, he cut off any angle at all by just getting right in the baseline. Now with two outs, Michael Tucker is singled and scored. One ball, no strikes. It's so rare to see him bat without Kenny Lofton on base in front of him. You wonder if they'll start pitching him a little differently. I mean, he gets so many fastballs when Kenny's on base. They started him with the curve there. Another one, this one downstairs, and the count 2 0. Good to see Damon Berryhill in the game, isn't it? Yes, it is. Talked to Damon a little bit before the game tonight. He's feeling fine. Hasn't had much playing time yet this year. He had elbow surgery. Yeah, it's only his second start. He missed all of last year after the surgery. Here's the 2 0. There's a strike inside corner with the knees. 2 1 on Michael Tucker. Two on pitch. It's even now, two and two. Of course, you probably all are aware that Jermaine Dye, one of the men who went to Kansas City in the trade that got Michael Tucker over here, is on the disabled list right now for the Royals. Today, the Cleveland Indians placed Marquise Grissom on the disabled list. He has a pulled hamstring. Ground ball right side, right at Jeff Kent. And Ben Cunningham has an easy inning. One, two, three, go to Braves in the second. Still two nothing as we go to the bottom half. On May 2nd, the vacation is over. The game's beginning with a doubleheader action on TBS at 7 o'clock and TNT at 8 o'clock. It's 40 games in 30 nights with the NBA playoffs on Turner Sports. 2-0 Atlanta as we go to the bottom half of inning two. Jeff Kent will lead things off. He's off to a terrific start. 3-20, four homers, and leads the club with 20 RBIs. Came over from the Indians in the Matt Williams deal along with... Jose Vizcaino, Julian Tavares, and Joe Roa, who was warming up earlier. It really seems strange to look at the Giants play without Matt Williams and Robbie Thompson in that lineup, isn't it? Isn't it, though? He's been there for so long. Here's the 0-1. Nothing in two. And every time I see Matt Williams in an Indian's uniform, it looks fun. Yes. see David Justice or Marquise Grissom it's not as odd because they've got navy and red on. Here comes the 0-2 now to Jeff Kent. Oh, Ray Kent for several years with the New York Mets before going over to Cleveland. I've always thought he was a good fastball hitter Pete and he may be capitalizing like Tucker on situations where Bonds on base in front of him so much. One thing Kent has become much better at he used to try to pull everything. Mm -hmm. Now they don't even play him as a pull hitter anymore. In fact, if anything, they're shading him as an off field hitter. Up and in, down and strikes goes Kent. First strike out of the night for Greg Maddox, one down. Boy, what a good pitch. Tied him up, up and in. The target's down, but you can see him try to pull his hands in close to his body to get the head of the bat out there. Ball was by him. Outstanding pitch. Good location there for Maddox. He has set down four in a row. Now J.T. Snow, the former California Angel, getting 208, no homers, five RBIs, takes ball one. His big year with the Angels two years ago, 1995, 289, 24 homers, and 102 runs driven in. Now they out of play, one one the count. He, his average a little deceiving too. I mean. 208. That's not good. He didn't want that kind of start, but he's also drawing a few free passes. 12 walks already. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Outside corner, 1-2. and two. J.T. Snow, part of one of the scariest spring training incidents this year. Mm -hmm. The 1-2 on the way. Ground ball right side, right at Lenke. And that's five in a row set down by Maddox. Remember that spring training game? J.T. Snow hit in the face by a Randy Johnson pitch. And he's all right. 
And now Glenn Allen Hill, the right fielder, who's, as Joe mentioned, off to a very good start offensively. Some big hits in that Florida Marlins series, hitting 283 now for the year with 12 RBIs on the year. Must be the green shades that are doing it for him. I think that's probably a lot. That and Gene Clines. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. Gene Clines has tried to work hard with Hill so that he doesn't pull off the ball as much as he used to. And one of the things he's tried to get him to do is a little toe tapping maneuver. One ball, one strike. His front foot before he strides, he brings it back a little bit. Chipper Jones does this sometimes when he feels like he's getting out too quick, lunging a little bit, little bit at the baseball. Outside corner again, it's one and two on Hill. At Montague, giving the corners, and you know Greg Maddox likes that. Now the one two on the way. Two balls, two strikes. Hill last year injured part of the time, but he had 19 home runs in only 98 games. The 2 2 on the way, fastball right by him. And six in a row set down by Maddox. We've completed two in San Francisco with the Braves leading 2 0. Seven to two. And Montreal snap. Chicago's winning streak. Pete oh no, five to one. The winner for Montreal. Hermanson, the winner as the starter at Colorado. They've only played five, but Rockies are all over Florida. Burks has hit a home run. Los Angeles, St. Louis just underway. Likewise at San Diego and Houston. In the American League, these finals, Minnesota a winner. Boston beat Cleveland, as we told you, with Steve Avery picking up his second win. Boston, Baltimore beat Chicago. New York over Milwaukee. And here it's 2 0 Atlanta. We're in the top half of the third. Chipper Jones drove in the first Atlanta run with a sack fly to left. He's down on the count here, 0 1. Inside, one ball, one strike. Fred McGriff and Ryan Klesko do up after Chipper. One one pitch. A little pop up foul territory. A lot of foul ground here in San Francisco, but not enough for that one to be playable. Count goes to one and two. Probably more foul territory in this ballpark than any place else in the National League. Yeah, I would agree. The area right behind home plate, similar to that in Dodger Stadium, but a lot more room from there over to the dugouts. Now the one-two on the way. Sharply hit toward short. This guy, you know, a couple of steps to his left. Dropped by Snow. The gold glove first baseman couldn't handle a routine throw from short. The error will be on Snow. He's looking at something out there, and I don't know what it is. If he lost that ball because he turned his glove over at the last second, had the fingers up, then turned them down, and hit off the heel of his glove, and he looked immediately up. There is a three-com park sign out there in left center that's got a white background. I wonder if he lost it in there. Looks like he did lose it. And you wonder if that sign is where he lost it. Give the error to Snow, put Chipper at first. Here's Fred McGriff who walked in the first inning. You had talked about in the open, Joe, how good defensively the Giants have been all year. That's only their 10th error of the season. Dusty told me they worked very hard in spring training despite the number of errors they committed in spring training. He said they worked tirelessly on ground balls. He said ground ball after ground ball, double play, different combinations. We were using different guys all the time. He said that Sonny Jackson worked with these guys for hours on end, and it really has paid off here in the early going. 2-0, the count on McGriff. We've been talking about the Giants' good start. The Braves with their best start, and equaling best start in their history, too. 13-4 and four after 17 games. They did it three times before, but they've never gone 14 and four. So a chance to do that here tonight. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Way outside, McGriff hasn't seen a strike yet. He walked on four straight in the first. 
And it's 3-0 here. And you'd think it'd be a guy at the plate that's been wearing him out, but the, he's only had five at-bats against Van Landingham, two for five, yes, but not someone that has a long history of beating up on you. Well, let's see if Van Landingham can throw a strike after the meeting. 3-0 pitch to McGriff. He is swinging and drills it foul up into the seats. Hard to believe as you look at this ballpark, and it's only going to be around for baseball for another three or four years. They'll be moving to a brand new stadium in the year 2000, closer to downtown in the China Basin District. This is now the second oldest ballpark in the National League next to Wrigley Field. 1960, that its first year. They played two years in Seals Park, right? Seal Stadium. Open air stadium. All the area out in the outfield was open and mighty windy in here. Here's the 3 1 runner going. Doesn't matter. It's high ball four. So an error and a walk, and the Braves have runners at first and second. Nobody out. And Ryan Plesco coming up. That's the third walk issued by that landing out. Yeah, it's bad timing. You know, Dusty's club's been playing such good defense. Somebody makes a mistake, the pitcher needs to try to help. The defense out a little bit. Don't compound the problem by walking, guys. And the Giants know, especially with Maddox on the mound, you can't afford to give the Braves extra outs and extra runs. Plesko, an RBI single in the first inning, now has 10 RBIs in the year. Little chopper toward second. Kent's going to run back, tag McGriff, and that's the only play he's got. Moving over to third is Chipper Jones. Good job by McGriff. Good job by Fred. If he keeps going, he runs right into the tag, and it's a double play. Exactly. An easy double play, but he makes Kent run him down and made him lunge to tag him so that he didn't have a chance to make the flip throw to first. Very seldom do you see a runner make an out on the base pass and get a high five when he gets back to the dugout. But look at this. He kept him out of the double play. First and third one out. Here's Lemke. Walked in the first inning. Takes a strike going one. Same two clubs here tomorrow afternoon. Tom Glavin against Kirk Reeder. Then the Braves back home on off day Thursday, and the Padres come into Atlanta for a weekend series. Well, they're logging some miles, those San Diego Padres, aren't they? They are. Hawaii over the weekend. Cross country to Atlanta later this week. Here's the 0-1. Out of play 0-2. Mark was popping up some Pete over in Colorado. He was getting under the ball and it was really frustrating him. Four of the last five outs he made there were pop-ups. One here wouldn't be so bad as long as it was popped up to the outfield and got Chipper home. But he's in the hole and may not get a good pitch to hit. Now the 0-2. One ball, two strikes on Lemke. One of the few nights we've been in Candlestick Park where the wind is not really a factor right now. It's, it's blowing a little bit, but not anything like it normally does at night here at Candlestick Park. And you can look at those flags all night, and it doesn't matter because blowing up there and blowing down on the field are two different things. Here's the one two on the way. Back out of play. Still a ball and two strikes. Braves leading at two nothing. We're in the top half of the third. Runners first and third with one out. center. Let's see if it's deep enough to score the run. Javier makes the catch. Chipper Jones is going to try it. The throw will be late. Chipper scores. 3-0 Atlanta. Only the second RBI of the year for Mark Lemke. Plesko remains at first. Three runs in. Two the result of sacrifice flies. And there's a good enough pitch for Mark to get under it and lift it into center. He didn't hit it very hard off the end of the bat a little bit. 
But a good jump off the back by Chipper, and even though it was a good throw by Javier, too late. Two outs now, runner at first for Eddie Perez, who fouled out to first. His first time up. Up the middle, let's see if this guy Eno can track it down. He does. The little flip to Jeff Kent in time for the force on Pesco. So an unearned run is all the Braves get in the third, but they now lead San Francisco going to the bottom of the third, 3-0. going. He's on the DL to start the season after having some bone chips removed from his elbow. Fouls one off down the right side. Nothing in one the count on Mark Lewis. I haven't seen Mark Lewis play enough to know if this is more the norm people. Look how far up in the box he is. I wonder if he's trying to do something, make an adjustment early on against Maddox. Outside corner, 0-2. 21 pitches, 16 strikes thrown by Maddox thus far. The 0 2. Line, right center field, base hit. Tucker back to the infield with it. A leadoff single, the first base runner of the night for the Giants. But Greg Maddox always has a lot of good late movement on his pitches, and maybe Lewis's theory is get it before you get eaten up by some of that. That's about as far up in the front of the box as you'll see any major league hitter get. Now Damon Berryhill, who caught Greg Maddox both in Chicago and in Atlanta. He's only been up six times this year, has three hits, one RBI. These two, Maddox and Berryhill, came up through the Cubs minor league system together. They were teammates in the minor leagues for several years. Yeah, pretty good friends. Barry Hill and Bilecki came to Atlanta together in that deal in late 91, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Over to first, back safely is Mark Lewis. even now one ball one strike on the bus right out to the ballpark today Greg Maddox is in the back of the bus talking to Kenny Lofton and Michael Tucker about a couple of these guys he hadn't seen before like J.T. Snow and like Daryl Hamilton who's hurt and about Mark Lewis how should I fit these guys where do they hit the ball he may have to go back to their book again on Lewis now the one one runner going pitch is swung on this throw down is into center field but slow getting back to his feet was Lewis. Lofton got on the ball quickly. He'll go no further. It's a stolen base for Mark Lewis. That is his first steal of the year. Well, Eddie Perez has, a, has had a few days off too, Pete. He's feeling mighty strong as he launches this one into center field. Watch Jeff Blauser as he comes down. He pretends to have the ball in his glove, but... Even so, Lewis realized it was in center field, but too late to advance. One and two, the count now on Barry Hill. The one-two offering got him. Barry Hill down on strikes. That's the third strikeout for Maddox, one down. Ahead in the count, he doesn't want Barry Hill to get that guy to third base. Change up in a great spot. Barry Hill couldn't reach it to pull it. That'll bring up the pitcher, William Van Landingham, who's 0 for 4 on the year. This is the fourth start of the year for Greg Maddox, and the third time he has started after the Braves lost a game. He lost one of those contests to Houston, and he beat the Cubs following the Braves' only home loss of the year. 
So he's one and one after Braves losses, which makes him 23 and 11 now of Atlanta. And he pitches after a Braves loss. And that ties him to the top spot with the Braves the last five years. Ties him with Steve Avery. Is that right? Also 23 and 11 after Braves losses before moving on. Got a glimpse of former Braves Sonny Jackson going through the signs at third base. Boy, he could fly. The 1 1 pitch on the way is fouled back. Yeah, when you see Sonny Jackson in that Giants uniform, almost all of these Braves who came through the Braves minor league system at some point in their minor league career worked under Sonny Jackson, either as a minor league manager, minor league coach. He was a roving instructor for a couple of years. 19 years in the Braves organization. Now the 1 2 pitch struck him out. He chased him up. Nope. Yes, he did. But he might have found it off the ground first. Fourth strikeout for Maddox. I realize it was a cold day and he had a big advantage that way over the Cubs in his last start, Pete, but he fanned eight that day. And off to a good start with the strikeouts here this evening at Candlestick, or excuse me, three count. Two outs here in the third. Runner still at second. Here's Stan Javier grounded out to third his first time up. and Maddox will talk it over. Got first base open. We get behind in the count. We got this guy, Eno, coming up next. We work to him with force play in order. First couple of pitches might be just trying to nibble at a corner, trying to get ahead in the count. If you fall behind, so be it. Pitch to Javier on the way, and it's low ball one. With four strikeouts in the game now, Maddox, 21 strikeouts on the year, only two walks, and one of those was intentional. One ball, one strike. That looked like a pitch either hit it or be hit. Javier going to hack no matter what. Talking about his strikeouts. Pete, check this out. Total pitches thrown. He throws almost 72% strikes. That was tops in the major leagues. That number on Beck, who was third, that surprises me. I didn't know that. One ball, one strike. One and two the count. I don't think he's thrown a strike yet, has he? It looks like he's got the hitters so conscious of taking that pitch that's been called a strike in the corners that they're chasing pitches now that are a foot off the plate. But with Javier, he didn't have to throw him one, and he swung at a pitch that was inside and fouled it off. That pitch was off the plate, and yet he's ahead in the count, one and two. Two outs, Lewis at second. And the one-two pitch. Fouled it back. And also a ball. That's a pitch he's throwing more of than I've seen before. And that's a changeup down and in the left handers. Like Glavin, he usually likes to work away from the hitter if it's, in this case, a left handed batter for Greg. He threw that one down and in. Again, the one two on the way. Up and in, and it hit him. It nicked him. And Javier down to first. Well, that was a tough break because all this was was a setup pitch. Up and in to move him off the plate, and he did a very little to get out of the way. In fact, he never even flinched until after the fact. So runners now are at first and second with two outs, and Jose Vizcaino will be the hitter. He grounded out to short his first time up. The 1-0 pitch 
pitch on the way. Evens the count. One ball, one strike. Very light, misty rain beginning to fall here at Three Com Park. One and one on Viscaino. In the air, shallow left field. Blouser going back. Klesko coming on, and Blouser stays with it, makes the catch. And that's out number three here in the last of the third. Giants get a pair of runners on their first hit, and a hit batsman leave them both. It's still 3 nothing as we head to the fourth. During the offseason, most baseball players go on exciting vacations. Others just go home, where laughter and smiles are popular tourist attractions, an island of beauty and other exotic creatures where colors radiate, flames glow, and the only hurricane you'll see comes in a tall glass. Come discover my island. Come discover Curacao. For information on Curacao and our island discount card, call 1-800-3-CURACAO. In Murray, Utah, a lot of folks like to work on their cars themselves. And they come to AutoZone because they know they'll find quality parts, low prices, great selection, and helpful people. Be a question. And let's see how you do with this one. Name the only San Francisco Giant to win the Cy Young Award. Ooh, think about that. We'll give you the answer bottom half of the inning. Right now, the Braves going back to work on William Van Landingham and starting it off at a part of the lineup that has been very, very productive. Jeff Blauser. We've had, we've had a lot of rallies, Joe, where Blauser's gotten on and Kenny Lofton or Michael Tucker has driven him in. What's been great is the way Jeff's been swinging the bat, hitting close to 400. It allows the pitchers to get him into scoring position for the top of the order. Jeff going after the first pitch falls behind but that's a smart idea with the rain coming down a little bit harder. You'd like to get two more innings in and then take your chances. Braves leading three nothing. Strike two. They played in an, almost a monsoon here Friday night against the Marlins when they rallied the win late. In fact one at the ninth inning against Rob Nen. Ball and two strikes. Looks like the rain has almost stopped right now. Maybe it was just a quick shower and now back to some mist. Lewis cuts it off. Nice play. Good throw. Strong arm for a guy that had elbow surgery at the end of spring training. Showed very good range on this ball going to his left. One, two, three, four, four and a half steps to his left to get that one. He had plenty of time to make the throw. I wonder what problem is that these guys have got these tinted glasses on. Maddox trying to help himself out. Hacking at the first pitch to <laughs> But you see Lewis has some propped up on the bill of his cap. Glenn Allen Hill had some when he was hitting. But not in the field. Yeah, he's got one. Does he? Yeah. Sure does. Mark Lewis going to need some windshield wipers for his when he gets back. Check those out. <laughs> <laughs> and then why he put them up on top. Lofton doubled in the first, scored a run, grounded out to Snow his last time up. And that will keep them honest. Came in second in the league and hitting behind Larry Walker. One and one to count. Braves got two in the first, then an unearned run in the third. Big, slow curve. Woo. I don't know if the fact that Lockton squared around altered the strike zone for Montague or not. It's been a very liberal strike zone tonight. Boy, that looked like a pretty good pitch. Sure did. 
Now he slaps it past Lewis. Boy, that is just like he's been working all year long. Makes a big turn. But Barry Bonds gets to it quickly and holds him to a single. That was a nice play in more ways than one, Pete, because once the ball comes off that grass and starts rolling on that rubbery mat that's down by the bullpen, that's tough to pick the ball up cleanly. Just beyond the reach of a diving Mark Lewis, but watch Bonds hustle here. Gets to it quickly, turns and throws quickly, and believe me, Kenny Lofton had his ideas about second base if, if Barry Bonds takes his time on this ball. But Bonds aware of that, up with it, a quick throw back to the infield, holding Lofton to a single. And he's running. Pitches a strike, but he swipes it easily. His ninth stolen base. That is something that I think as this game goes along, if it remains close, they will try to run on Damon Berryhill. After undergoing that elbow surgery, he is now 0 for 3, trying to throw out runners. Tucker faked the butt just to try to protect Kenny, and it worked well. Oh, and two. Funny thing about the Giants and their numbers, Pete, is that even though they've been on this great run, they've won nine in a row, 13 out of 15, and they're 13 and three. They've been outscored by their opponents, 126 to 123. Out hit by the game. Right. Pitch must have come back. Ed Montague rings him up. And that's the first strikeout for Van Landingham. He leaves the runner in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still 3 0 Atlanta. Here's the answer to tonight's Affleck trivia question. How many of you got this one? Name the only San Francisco Giant to win the Cy Young Award. Wasn't one Marichal, it was Mike McCormick back in 1967, left hand pitcher. I didn't get it. I went through Mike Gaylord guesses. Jack Sanford. Barry Bonds leads off the fourth and promptly lines one into center field for a base hit. You were talking about now he's off to a slow start numbers wise, Pete. And hasn't had an RBI in a few days. He's been sitting on career number 999 for seven games. He's gone oh, seven wow. games without an RBI. Over 300 homers. He'll have 1,000 RBIs shortly. Closing on 400 stolen bases. He and his dad, as a father and son group, have more home runs than anybody. They trail the Bell family. In RBIs. Kent to Chipper Jones, 19 2, and is. And Jeff Kent, so for two. Maddox has made some good pitches on him. Two away in the Giants' fourth, and that'll bring up JT Snow. <laughs> Kent now 7 for 33 lifetime against Maddox. Another nice turn by Mark Lemke. This was the Braves' specialty in that Colorado series. They turned nine double plays in that series. How bigger double plays in that ballpark? J.T. Snow fouls one back. He grounded out his first time against Maddox. Made a rare error on a simple throw to him in the third inning. Still don't know what happened on that. Uh -uh. Chipper Jones led off the inning with a ground ball and eventually scored. One ball, one strike. Two and one. That one had Eddie Perez and Ed Montague dancing around. Braves play again here tomorrow afternoon. Tom Glavin gets Kirk Reeder. Three and one to Snow. I have that for you here on TBS beginning at 3 o'clock Eastern. 3.30, excuse me. Ball four to J.T. Snow. First walk issued by Maddox and only the second 
walk of a regular variety all year for him. He had one other intentional pass. Three thirty Eastern time tomorrow for that start here against the Giants. Glenn Allen Hill struck out his first time up. Lines this one into the gap in right center field. Over to get it is Tucker. J.T. Snow was watching the outfielders. Tucker fell down, and now Snow rounds third. He'll be held there by Sonny Jackson. Michael Tucker, after he got to it, slipped and fell, tossed the ball to Kenny Lofton to get it in. And his quick thinking saved the run. And it'll be a double for Glenn Allen Hill. Yes, quick thinking does save a run, but I'm, I'm not sure what J.T. Snow is thinking about here. You got two outs, the ball hit toward the gap. Whether Michael Tucker falls down or not, you got to keep running. Trust your third base coach to give you the indication. Pete, you see it more and more and more from base runners, and I, for the life of me, don't know why guys do it. If he hadn't stopped right there and looked back over his shoulder, he probably scores on that ball. Yeah, why do guys do that? Why are they not taught differently? I don't understand. Because when you get to second base, your only thought should be of scoring in your third base coach. They'll let you know whether to keep running or to stop. Sonny Jackson did what he had to do, and it's throw off the stop sign. And with Greg Maddox out there, every run counts. And they've got a couple in scoring position for Mark Lewis, who singled his first time up. It's a hit 0 and 1. Now he's got the glasses on, ready to hit. It might be a little bit like shooting glasses. Make everything a little bit brighter. One and one. The Damon Barry Hill on deck, first base open. Braves leading 3 0. looking ahead with his pitcher do up two hitters after Mark Lewis if they get anything going here they may go right to the bench and pinch hit. they've got Joe Rolla up again in the bullpen they've had two hits and a walk in the inning but no runs across thanks to a double play fastball lifted into right center but Michael Tucker is there and Maddox is out of the jam Lewis Hit it well, but right at the right fielder. No runs, two hits, two left. The Giants have stranded four the last two innings. We go to the fifth. The Braves still shutting out the Giants. Three nothing. Part of the order for the Braves. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Chipper Jones, Fred McGriff, and Ryan Plesko. Atlanta got two in the first and another unearned run in the third. Jones has been involved both times. He drove in a run in the first with a sacrifice fly, aboard on an error in the third. He scored on a sacrifice fly by Limke. Sends this one deep to left, and Bonds, shy of the wall, makes the catch. One pitch, one out. And Fred McGriff will be the batter, and he hasn't had much to hit tonight. He has walked twice. Only had one strike thrown to him, and he hit that one foul into the seats off to the right. He had a good series in Colorado, five for 14 with a double and five RBIs. That curveball got away from Ben Landingham. Want to know the count? They play Fred kind of deep, don't they? He's a little bit up in right field. Glenn Allen Hill about two strikes from the warning track. And he sends one to left, and Bonds has got room for another one. And makes the play, two down.
Brian Klesko singled in a run in the first inning. And then with runners at first and second in the third, he got jammed with a little check swing and hit into a fielder's choice. He had one of his best series of the year in Colorado with a home run, two doubles, and five RBIs. And missed a game. Played in only two games. Boy, that home run again. It was a tee shot, wasn't it? the end of the bat with a big swing. Oh, a nice play by Snow to save a bad throw. And a one, two, three inning for Van Landingham. We've played four and a half. Skip and Don come over your way here on the Superstation. Braves are on top three to nothing. Don Sutton with you for the rest of this one, and it has been Greg Maddox again tonight, and boy, am I glad we dodged that monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they covered the field for absolutely no reason. Damon Berryhill leads off and fouls it away. It's 0-1. Berryhill, Van Landingham, and Javier do here, and no activity at the moment in the Giants' bullpen. The Braves would like to get three more outs and make this an official game. Then if it rains again, so what? Berryhill, a strikeout victim, his first time. He missed a change of pace. Low and away, it's one and one. Good to see him playing again. Yeah, he's off to a good start, and they like his handling uh, Van Landingham. Occasionally, Van Landingham's mind could wander a little, they say. But Barry Hill right on top of it, very forceful, and does a good job with the kid. Up and in, he fouled it back, a ball and two strikes. Crowd of 15,000 or so, I would guess. Disappointing for the Giants. That's about, you, about what they're averaging. Yeah, you're saying they're behind last year in attendance. Yeah, right? they averaged about 17, 8, maybe 18,000 last year, but they're averaging right at 15, 14,550, something like that. Both home and on the road. Low and outside. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom half of the fifth inning. the first baseline the ball's headed around the horn and Maddox has recorded his fourth strike make it his fifth strike out of the night. Barry Hill chasing Willie McCovey's record for the longest thrown bat down the right field line that change up will do it to you. You're committed to swing and safest thing I guess it probably saves your wrist and hands when you just let the bat go. Good pitch by Maddox. Here's Van Landingham off his thumbs into the seats. And a fan throw. Menlo Park to make a play. With a very expensive club. 0 and 1 and count. Right through there with a fastball and two. I was interested to see how Greg Maddox would respond here in this park where you get so much movement because in Denver, that's where he worked out. You get no movement and he really had to work hard to get ready for this so to go from a mile high ballpark with no air resistance and no movement into this one it could have been very easy for a guy not to be able to throw strikes but boy he has been right on target he disposes of Van Landingham on the outside corner six strikeouts two out in the fifth and Stan Javier the batter Javier has grounded a third. He was hit by a pitch on a 1 2 offering up and in. Sort of grazed his hand. Same two teams tomorrow. We'll have it for you at 12 30. Tom Glavin and Kirk Reeder will pitch it. 3 30 Eastern, 12 30 where we are. Foul to the screen, nothing in one. Two of the Braves' runs have scored on sacrifice flies, the other on a line single. We talked before about the new look to the offense, and that's a good indication of part of the new look, not necessarily relying on a three run homer to get the runs. He bunts down the first baseline, it's a beauty, and McGriff can't make the play. I don't think he'd have gotten him anyway. Perfect bunt by Javier. I 
think with one out or nobody out, that's a good play. And I guess you want to get going any way you can, but you'd like to see Javier hit a double. Right now, with two outs, you're going to have to hit a double to get him around. And you know, I just I just think the old school of baseball, you try to get a double here instead of bunting for a base hit. You bunt for a base hit, you better steal second. That's exactly right. And that's why you'll see Kenny Lofton do it a lot this year, because Lofton is almost automatically going to run. Eddie Perez to the mound, and that's probably what he's saying to Maddox. I know you have trouble holding him on, but I think he's going here. Montreal beat the Cubs today 5 to 1. Colorado hammering Florida. It's 12 2 now, bottom of the eighth. We'll give you all the scores later on on the Delta scoreboard, but while we have a moment, the Dodgers lead St. Louis 2 1 after 4. Houston 4 1 over San Diego after 4. For the National League. And earlier, the Mets beat the Reds 7 2. Javier has stolen as high as 36. That came two years ago, but he's not 25 anymore. Last year for the Giants, double figures, he had 14. Another guy tries to bunt. Is it fair or foul? foul? Now that bunt in this spot isn't such a bad play with Barry Bonds next representing the tying run. And if he gets it down. I don't think a whole lot of people were expecting that. If he gets it down, he had a shot at, uh, at getting on. Bonds needs one more RBI for a thousand. I think he did. Twenty-two walks. On. Yep. There's no Matt Williams behind him. But if they keep playing like this, uh, it's okay. They are one. Oh, and two. Don't change the pace even when you know it's coming. It's hard to hit. He has such good arm speed, good motion on it. He usually puts it in a good spot. And he always gets moving. Candlestick is much maligned because of the weather here, and it's an old truck now. But without question, the best ballpark burrito is here. No doubt about it. The 0-2 pitch out, nothing happening. A ball and two strikes. An odd pitch really to pitch out on. Unless you're just convinced that Javier feels he has to steal something. Those are those uh, QBD burritos, aren't they? Yeah, that's the band name. The one two pitch. Up the middle, is that going to sneak through? Blouser, good play. Low throw, McGriff digs it out. Saves him in air and the inning is over. Good play all the way around, especially by Fred. So it's an official game now. One hit, no runs, no airs, one left. Five innings have gone by and your score, Braves three, Giants nothing. Sunday night on the Superstation. Beautifully done, Don, and Mark Lemke leads off the sixth and takes the strength. I could see your little lower lip. You're so used to doing that and loving it. But, well, it's you needed a change. A great honor to turn it over to you. Inside the, the lemmer, one and one the count. Lefke has walked and driven in a run with a sacrifice fly. He has a sacrifice fly. Chipper has a sacrifice fly. Klesko and RBI single. And there's your score. And a recap of the Budweiser game. So yeah, more or less. Come to think of it. Yes, it is. Two balls and a strike. In case you missed it 10 seconds ago. <laughs> the 2 1 pitch. Over the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. If you take the first inning out of this ball game when Van Landingham seemed just totally uncomfortable, couldn't put the ball where he wanted it at all, this is a good ball game. I mean, it's still a good ball game, but it's a one to nothing game without that first inning. Full count, three and two. He's thrown a lot harder than he was earlier. In the game Did he look to you like he was just kind of tiptoeing yeah, around? Feeling his way. There's no wind. He might have fell out of place. Plenty of wind up here in the booth, but not much on the field. The three-two pitch here it is. Got it. Off-speed pitch. Lefke's problems with the bat continue. 
Van Landingham records his second strikeout. Eddie Perez, the batter, he's struggled too. Van Landingham now mixing in all his pitches. There's a difference. And one of those since the first coming on an air. And he was behind virtually every hitter in that first inning. Whether he walked him or not, he was always pitching from behind. Perez takes a strike. Eddie has popped to first and hit into a fielder's choice. Steve Avery got a win tonight. Marquise Grissom put on the disabled list by the Indians. And a third in between Hopper. Lewis comes him down to him. Marquise has had some hamstring problems and they're not getting any better and you know him he didn't want out of the lineup and they finally decided the best thing to do was make sure that he'd have to sit down and get well. So we wish him a speedy recovery. And likewise to Jermaine Dye. Yeah. That's one that was some weird feeling in Bobby's office today before the game watching Steve Avery pitch to David Justice. It was like spring training yeah. little squad game. It's just weird, weird feeling. In that at bat, that's the only one I saw. David walked. But Avery won the game 8 to 2. He went the first six. A ball and a strike. 3 4 and 0 for the Braves, 0 4 and 1 for the Giants. One and two, the count. You can see a difference in his delivery now. Remember, over on radio, you and I were talking about how all his momentum was going toward the third baseline. Now he's still stepping that way a little bit, but the top half of his body is coming over toward the left-handed batter's box. Watch the follow-through. Just missed. With much more leverage now. Two balls, two strikes. His best fastball in that first inning was about 85 or 86. Now he's topping out at about 90 miles an hour and for the most part keeping it down in the strike zone. Well, he hit that one twice. May have gone off his foot. Just a foul strike. Still two and two. Here's a look. I watched. His momentum will come this way. He throws across his body. Uh, foot to this side but now here's the mechanics uh, and the follow through that carries his weight back toward the first baseline much more much better leverage fly ball pretty well hit in the right field back goes Glenn Allen Hill to the track he's got it. Jeff hit that ball a long way to the off field but not long enough Van Landingham sets him down again he set down seven in a row bottom of the six three nothing Atlanta the Olympic stain look ahead at what's on deck one more game here that'll be a day game tomorrow that will be Glavin against Kirk Reeder and then the Padres come to town on Friday we will have two of them for you here on TBS Braves have announced that Friday night will be Denny Nagel Saturday John Smoltz and Sunday will be Greg Maddox and that's what's on deck for the Braves and here is Barry Bonds just where you want to see him nobody on base upstairs one ball no strikes that shift still looks so funny to me to see him hit a rocket right where the second base would be normally standing and have Blouser not have to make a move to catch it. 2 0. Oh. He's used to this. What is his base on ball total up? 22. To? Already. This is their 17th game. High pop. Long run for Plusco, but he gets there. Puts it away, one down. So Bonds tried to beat the shift and popped out. That'll frustrate you. One away, and Jeff Kent the banner. Kent has struck out and wrapped into a double play. Started on a good stab by Chipper Jones at third base. No small number of people give a lot of the credit to this early start, this good start, to Gene Kleins. Former outfielder in the Pirates and the Chicago organization, who is now the hitting coach here, who has done one heck of a job and one heck of a job. At, and one of the guys that's really benefited has been Jeff Kent. Glenn Allen Hill, Jeff Kent, two of his prized pupils early in the year. Oh, and one the count. A lot of break on that pitch, but 
way outside. One and one. You can always expect that here. You got to make some allowances in this ballpark for some reason. Much bigger curveballs, bigger sliders. The one one pitch. Here it is. At the knees on the outside edge. One and two. Well, we miss our old pal Hank Greenwald, who retired as voice of the Giants after last year. But his departure allows us to visit more with John Miller, the former Baltimore voice. Breaking ball gets Kent two down. Seven strikeouts for Maddox. Watch this ball come back on the plate. It's almost like a left-hander slider. He gets so much movement on it. And Eddie Perez does just what you want a catcher to do. Set that net right in the middle of the chest protector. Even if you're off the plate, no extra motion. Just let it come to you. J.T. Snow is the batter. He has grounded to second. He has walked. He has made an error that led to a run. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. Maddox is amazing. He lets out with a yelp just as the ball leaves his hand when he knows he's made a bad pitch. And you could hear him there. There's a fastball. He threw right by him, one on one. Sometimes I think he might do that to set that hitter up a little bit too. Miss up there and yell and come right back with another one. He will mess with your head. Yes, no doubt he will. Him. One and two is the count. It's over now. Colorado beat the Marlins 13 to four. And not so hot trip for Florida. See you. Inning over. Eight strikeouts for Maddox, who is absolutely dominating at this point in time. The end of six innings. Braves on top, three nothing. Think on one of the pitches, either to Jeff Kent or maybe to J.T. Snow. He may have slightly aggravated that hamstring again. I think we have a shot of that. Uh, Take a look at the last pitch and watch how he ends up. He normally ends up square, but here bounced a little bit. And you could almost see him take a little limp step as he came off the mound. No not taking any chances, so the Braves will have a new pitcher with the Giants bat. I think he heard it a couple of pitches before that, but you can see that it was bothering him right there. Tony Graffinino leads things off, pinch hitting for Maddox. Didn't you fouls it away? I'm sorry. Didn't no. you think it was the one like the second pitch to uh, like the second pitch that he threw? He jumped straight in the air. Yeah. I just remember what, what's he doing that for after a, after a pitch. I think it was to Kent. But he's through for the night. Eight strikeouts, four hits, six innings. A hit bats. Tony doesn't catch up, and it's 0 2. Mike Balecki will come on for Atlanta. Jim Poole is in the bullpen for. San Francisco. Oh and two the count. A little bit outside a ball and two strikes. So Mike Balecki will come on to pitch. That's a shame. Greg had to leave. He was on target tonight. Got it. Graffinino goes down swinging. It's like watching a completely different pitcher since the first inning. Good slider, perfect spot. He threw him two fastballs out there and then came right back with a slider that starts in the strike zone and breaks down and away out of the strike zone. Kenny Lofton, two for three, a run scored, a stolen base. Just a typical night for him the way he's played this year. One out, nobody aboard. to bunt took it outside one ball no strengths Cincinnati Reds a big disappointment huh six and 13 now lost again today to the Mets two and a lot of speculation up in the press box tonight that Ray Knight might be under the microscope well when you lose you always are I guess Two and one the count. They don't have much pitching, the Reds do. No. don't seem to. They'll score you some runs. 
the 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. We'll have all the scores for you coming up shortly on the award winning Delta scoreboard. Don't see that very often. No. A strike thrown to the screen. Saw it once in the Texas League. Two and O pitch all the way to the screen. That catcher didn't play a whole lot longer. Really. Did you throw the pitch? Yep. <laughs> ball forward aloft. He's on his way to first. I swear that pitchers, when a guy like Lofton or an Otis Nixon hits, the last conscious thought they have before they concentrate on throwing the ball is whatever I do, don't walk them, and then you walk them. Well, that's kind of, if you talk to some sports psychologists, some of them, they'll tell you that if you're, if you're thinking about doing something, you do it a positive way. You say, throw strikes. You don't say, don't walk him. And you'll see a lot of times pitching coaches will come to the mound and they'll say, don't get it up to this guy in the first pitch be letter high instead of saying keep it down to them. Whatever that meant. That's not important. <laughs> the stretch. Renner at first one out Lofton is still in one you'd figure him to run again. Moises Alou hit two home runs his fifth and sixth Ellis Burks his fifth. I bet they had a sellout. Hey. <laughs> You're really sharp. Roger Bailey, the winner, 3 0. Pat Ramp, the loser, 2 and 1. 19 hits for the Rockies. Base hit right field. Here we go again. Lofton is going to try. Glenn Allen Hill's got a gun. He is safe. Throw gets away. Lofton races for the plate. He will score. Tucker to third. He's in there. 4 to nothing. Oh, you can't beat speed. Lofton deked him. He slowed down a little bit at second base and then kicked in the afterburners. The throw looked like a good one, but it got by Mark Lewis. Boy, have we seen this a number of times. Ground ball right side going to get through. Here comes Glenn Allen Hill. This play could have been very close. The throw bounces right over Lofton's shoulder, maybe off of his helmet. That'll be an error on Glenn Allen Hill. If that throw is about a foot to the left, they may have gotten him out. But the front end of this play is the one we seem to keep our eyes on so much. But Michael Tucker never hesitated, and that's how he's at third. And that'll do it for Van Landingham on the night. Dusty Baker makes the Bell South call to the bullpen. And there to answer is Jim Poole back after this. So you're saying that a fluoride toothpaste that I can use every day also gives me whiter teeth? Six and a third, five hits. Four runs to this point. The winner of third is his responsibility. Four walks. The walks really hurt him. Three strikeouts. One of the runs unearned. And it could be that a couple more will be before things are over here. A lot of the credit for the Giants' success to this point has to go to the bullpen. Because they are not exactly beating the daylights out of the ball. They're only hitting about 240 and averaging about four runs a ball game. But this bullpen from some guys who have been cast off by other ball clubs. This is the 11th appearance for, uh, check that, this is the ninth appearance for Poole. He's 1-0. He hasn't allowed a smell in four innings. He makes his home now in Gainesville. He's out of Georgia Tech. You'll remember he's the guy that David Justice hit the home run against that turned out to win the World Series for about 95. He's a much travel less tender. He's been with the Dodgers, Texas, Baltimore, Cleveland, and now the Giants. Infield in as Chipper Jones bats with a runner at third and one out. Chipper with a chance for his second RBI of the night. They're going to run with a sacrifice fly back in the first. Ground ball. Good play by Lewis. Saved a run and got the out. Fine play by the third baseman with the infield in. That's a very, very tough play. But he made it two down. And the runner is still at third. First step makes this play. Watch out. Well, you can't see it from there, but how he's already on the move, smothered it out of the corner of his eye, took a look at Tucker, and he made a strike throw to first. But that first step, it was almost like he had his weight leaning toward the shortstop side when the ball was hit. So it takes some two out action from Fred McGriff if the Braves are going to pad their lead any further. One ball, no 
no strength. A wild pitch would be nice. Oh, you can hear a pin break in this place. 2 0. Ryan Cusco, do next. They had 10,000 folks walk up on Sunday, and I think that there are a lot of people surprised that they didn't have a bigger walk up with the Braves in town. The only thing I can think of is that, that threat and the predicted weather, which never materialized. Might have scared a lot of people who were thinking about coming to the game, might have scared them away. 3 0, the count to McGriff. What is that animal mascot out in center field? Looks like a rat. Oh, it's a seal? Doesn't that look like a rat to you? Yeah, I have to say it does. Actually, it looks a lot like Lou Rat. <laughs> yes, it does. McGriff walks for the third time tonight. That's a rat. I don't care what anybody says. Well, this is a San Francisco wharf. It could be a, a wharf, wharf rat. rat. <laughs> Two out, runners on the corner. What are those other little animals that float around in Monterey Bay and crack the oysters on their chest? Sea otters. Time is called now as another ball gets. I don't know how things are going to be. That's the second ball that's gotten away with Balecki warming up in the book. <laughs> so we could have an exciting bottom of the seventh. to work again in the Giants bullpen. Ryan Plesko waits against the left-hander. Good curveball drops in there. Nothing in one. Who has a good curveball? It's a big one, too. Former Brave farmhand. Oh and two, same pitch. Mark Lemke would be next, but they're two out in the inning. Fastball, he fought it off. But he sees a curveball here. Still 0 2. I also bet he will hear from Damon Barry Hill, too, because Barry Hill had slid way off the outside corner, almost behind. The right handed batter's box reminding him that he wanted it out there. Sliding outside again. Throw to first for absolutely no reason. Fred's not going anywhere. Still 0 2. Lou Warfred out in center field. Just missed a ball and two strikes. Look at that old star that Elvis saw, C.C. Otter. That's, they say it's a seal, okay, but it's a San Francisco seal. The one-two pitch. Curve is high. Two balls, two strikes. 4 nothing Atlanta is our score, and the Braves have them on the corners with two out. The Braves have left five men to this point in the game, three of them in the first. Two more runs scored for Lofton. Right? Fastball fouled away. Klesko proving tough up there. Still two and two. Lofton now has scored 21 runs in 17 plus games. That's not too bad either. Got him with a curveball, inning over. Plesko goes down swinging. Poole does his job. He puts out the fire. The Braves get a run on a hit. There was an air and a couple of runners left. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. It's 4 nothing Atlanta. 
two of the comms right there. Can't beat fun at the old ball club. Now, what are they supposed to be? Well, I don't want to know, I don't think. Radioactive? Yeah. Glenn Allen Hill leads it off against the new Atlanta pitcher Mike Pilecki. The reins are falling again. We are in a an official game now, so. Here we go. Hill chases the first pitch and misses it badly. 0 and 1 the count. Maddox six innings, four hits, eight strikeouts, one hit batsman. William Van Landingham six and a third, five hits, four runs, only two of them earned, four walks, three strikeouts. We're Funny in the papers today, all they talked about was the good giant defense, and it's been their defense that's sort of let them down tonight. One one pitch. We were talking a little bit earlier about Gene Kleins, another one of his prized pupils. Right here, thanks, Eddie. Right here, uh, Glenn Allen Hill was pulling off of everything, but now Gene Kleins has him tapping that left foot to kind of keep his weight back and, and to wait a little bit longer. Two balls, two strikes. Inside Joe Carefoot. Nobody on, nobody out, bottom of the seven. Don't do that. We get in trouble for being inside. Oh, that's right. There's Gene Kleins. Knows a lot about hitting. And knows how to teach. The 2 2 pitch. Threw it right by him. A high fastball. Hill is out of there. One away. His ninth strikeout by Atlanta pitchers. Galecki strikes out the first man he faces. Yeah, if we can just be good for a couple more days of basketball playoffs to be underway, and then we got a free pass. Mark Lewis is the batter. Speaking of which, Pete's going to do a couple of those games. He's got one in Salt Lake City and one in Detroit. One ball, no strengths. Broken backgrounder. McGriff hesitates, now takes it. Malecki covers, two down. Fred took a couple steps toward that ball, and it was like, wait a minute, I know Mark can get it, but by then it was too late to get back there anyway. And he was wise to go on with the play then because you could have fouled it up and fouled up Lemke. And the second thing he did is not hesitate after he caught the ball. He came right up and, and got that ball to Bilecki. As a pitcher, well, you hate to have a guy over there. Watch now. Quick throw. Up. Bing. He gets the ball before he gets to the bag. You hate to have a guy who'll give you a double and triple pump, and you and the runner and the ball get the bag at the same time. Damon Berryhill hits one hard to right, but it's going to be caught. Tucker is there, and the inning is over. So Bilecki breezes through the seventh in one, two, three fashion. We move on to the eighth inning, and the Braves enjoy a 4 nothing lead. It's tough watching a hard-working player having to sit it out on the... ...for Reed of the Mets as they win. Sosa a homer for Chicago. It wasn't enough strange homer for Montreal to make the difference. A pair of home runs for Moises Alou. Florida still loses. They're off to... Uh, Pitchers battle down in Los Angeles. The Cardinals visiting there. Houston had a four-run fourth inning. That's the difference in that ball game. Over in the American League, McGuire and Conseco hit homers. That's not enough. Jefferson, Garcia, Perrin, and O'Leary make it enough for Boston over Cleveland. Chicago in a close one with Baltimore. Mike Messina wins it. He is three and one. The Yankees, Andy Pettit goes nine. Gets a lot of runs to play with. Kansas City, Kansas City at Seattle got themselves a pitching duel. And Toronto is at Anaheim. That one is tied in the seventh inning. You are up to date on the Delta scoreboard. Okay, Don, thank you. And Mark Lemke leads off against Joe Roa, who started his career in the Braves chain. Fouled away 0-1. If I remember correctly, he was traded for Alejandro Pena, yeah, back, right? in, back in 91, and he came over here in the Matt Williams deal. Owen won the count. The big right-hander cuts it loose. Outside, he's been in the Cleveland organization. Pitch for the Gulf Coast Braves, then Pulaski, then Macon in the Atlanta chain. Turn that one over on the outside corner, one and two. Unusual delivery, a couple of movements in it, coming right over the top. His breaking ball goes straight down. He hasn't allowed a run yet, five and two thirds. A little chopper back to the mound. That should be easy. And is one away. So Mark is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly on a walk. Here's Eddie Perez 0 for 3. 
And I think Eddie's probably getting just a little bit antsy at the plate because he's chasing some pitches out of the strike zone. He likes to hit that first pitch, likes a fastball in the first pitch. Last year, getting to play a little bit more with just a little more patient. Grounded third, that should be easy. Mark Lewis across the diamond. He's a fine defensive third baseman. Two quick outs here. The rain has just about stopped again. Blouser tonight is 0 for 3. That's news the way he's been going. Roa spent the last couple of years pitching primarily at Buffalo, where in 95 he was 17 and 3, and last year 11 and 8. Then each year had a cup of coffee with Cleveland. He's done a good job over here. Did he go? They asked for help, and the answer is no. One ball, no strikes. We will be with you at 3.30 Eastern Time tomorrow. Tom Glavin. Kirk Reeder will pitch it. The lefties. Fastball high to Jeff. It's 2-0. Oh. Mike Balecki. Looks good in the on-deck circle. He would be next. There's a strike two and one. Four nothing Atlanta. Our score. Home against the Padres over the weekend. Good breaking ball. Two and two. The count. Well, he starts that right over the top. Starts it downhill. Tries to start it in the bottom of the strike zone. Wants you to chase it out of the strike zone. Foul to the screen, still two and two. He stays alive, the count stays the same. Boy, the White Sox, what a disappointment they have been. With Frank Thomas and Albert Bell. Yeah, they would out hoisted that payroll a little bit and things are not going well. Well they settled the baseball strike so. Yeah that did do that didn't it? I think the Hawk and Wimpy are not having a whole lot of fun right no. now. <laughs> the 2 2 pitch. Full count now three and two. But the price of food is good in the press line so we Wimpy be all right. He's no matter the situation, he can adapt. <laughs> That's Tom Petrarch, the former Brave outfielder, who does the White Sox games. 3 2 pitch. Corked into left center field. That ball is well hit. On the run is Javier. Can't get it. It's up against the wall. Blouser into second with a double. And he'll stay there with two out for Mike Pilecki. And Jeff has his first hit of the night. And almost got it out of here. Hit it about 380 feet to deep left center. That happens to curveballs a lot that don't get down in the strike zone. You see, he had time to adjust on that pitch. Starts, waits, hold it, here it comes, and got it in the air. I, I know he would have liked to have hit a homer there. Pitcher coming up right now. Still, you get this spot in the lineup out of the way for next inning. And he did that all with his hands. If, had yeah. he been in perfect sync, he would have hit it up. Well, here's Mike Pilecki. He might just have High chopper down the third base line. Trouble if it's fair, but it's foul. Rich Rodriguez, the left-hander in the bullpen for San Francisco, he just began to throw. Ground ball. Wow. That's right, John Miller told you that's a Phrases he was going to try to work into he the game said, tonight. He said, "I've been working network, and I've learned that uh, there are, you have to get your lines in." And he says, "What do you think of this one? Low ball." Well, he decided that was probably pretty good, <laughs> and that he'd have a chance to use it tonight. <laughs> Only if appropriate. He's a beauty. Man. He's <laughs> a funny guy. You ever heard him do his Japanese version of Vin Scully? Oh, and the one where Vin, well, the one where Vin is ordering breakfast isn't bad either. <laughs> a 
ball on the strength to count. Balecki courts one into deep left center field. Back goes Bonds, still going. He's going to get there, and the inning is over. And Mike didn't miss by much. Hitting one right out of here. What a blast by Balecki, but all for nothing. One hit. No runs, no errors. One left. Bottom of the eighth. Braves four, Giants nothing. Is that Utah? That was too good to pass up. Marvin Bernard pinch hits here and takes it low. One ball, no strengths. You're going to get us into another meeting. The 1 0 pitch. It's even now, 1 and 1. Sit right field. Bernard, the little guy, scorches one to right. That's the way the eighth inning starts. And Stan Javier in the top of the order for the Giants. Greg Maddox went the first six. That hamstring obviously began to aggravate him again. And Mike Valecki got him in order in the seventh and has given up a hit to start the eighth. Rodriguez begins to throw again in their bullpen. Not unusual for the Giants to see Bernard come off the bench and get a hit. He is a perfect three for three now in 97. They have come from behind to win seven times this year, so let's not start celebrating yet. Clowns and Embry in the Atlanta bullpen. Oh and one the count. Jose Vizcaino works to hit next. Time is called again. Some yo-yo is throwing a beach ball or something down on the field. See if Plesko can dunk. No, he's going to carry it. He's going to keep it. That's an ESPN beach ball. Pop it. I just think I think that was a medicine ball. It just Ryan carries it so easily. <laughs> And Balecki out in front, 0 2. If he can get him in the eighth, I would not be surprised to see Mark Wohlers try to finish this one up. The rain has stopped. Javier out of the box for a moment. Now he stands back in. Just did stay alive. Good piece of hitting there. He was fooled, but just spoiled it to stay alive and get another shot. Yeah, he's choked up on the bat a little bit, and what he's just trying to do is much like we see Kenny Lofton do, serve that pitch in the left field. Ryan is playing a surprisingly deep left field, as a matter of fact. Yeah, Javier doesn't have power that way. You can see how far up on the bat handle that he is. Yeah, that's deep in left. Again, he took a shot at left field and fouled it away. 3.30 tomorrow, Tom Glavin, Kirk Reeder. And then we're off Thursday, home Friday, but no TV because of the basketball playoffs. We'll be back with you Saturday night and Sunday night. Is Friday night's game on Sports South? I imagine it is. Yes, indeed it is. 0-2, oh the count. Just missed outside. One and two, the count. Two balls, two strikes, up and away. He threw that fastball out there. He tried to get him to chase that, and he kept fouling it away. What he's trying to do now is finish him off with a fork ball out there, but he can't get it in the spot that he wants. Two balls, two strikes. McGriff behind the runner at first by about a step. Got it. Javier 
foul tipped it into the glove of Perez. Went out. Right back with the fastball. Good spot, but just a touch more velocity and able to keep Javier from fouling it up. Part of the reason he was late on that may be of the, the thought of the football he put in his mind. It's amazing how much better Balecki's fastball has gotten. It seems to get better every time he goes out there. Vizcaino hits a foul. He is 0 for 3. He's yet to get the ball out of the infield. Danger is on deck. Barry Bonds. You guys keep hitting a fastball like that, Skip. It, it tells you that there's some life to it, too, that it's getting movement near home plate. Or as you like to refer to it, lately. I do. Yeah, I've heard you say it once. I heard you say it once, and you seem to like it. One and one, McCann. In the seventh, Houston leading San Diego 6 to 1. Two balls and a strike. Double play would be nice here. Perez out for a word with Vilecki. 4 0 Atlanta. Our score one on, one out in the eighth. You get a mistake to hit off Mike Pilecki, you're going to have to drive it the other way because he is not going to give you anything inside that you can pull. Right through there, it's two and two. Boy, if you could get a double play here, then you get Bonds leading off the ninth, and that's yeah, that's what you like. Two two pitch. Full count. Now they didn't miss by much, but miss he did. So let's see how the Giants play it with Bernard who has good speed. Took another shot at the outside corner. Eddie Perez did his job of trying to draw it back in there and doing it smooth and getting a call, but that was a little too far outside. And that Montague was right on the pitch. Yes, right. The three two. Double play ball. Blouser. Lepke. Yes. Bonds will lead off the ninth, just what you wanted. Balecki does his job and does it to perfection. One hit, no runs, no airs, nobody left at the end of eight, four nothing Atlanta. Lofton, Tucker, Chipper Jones, if anybody gets on, Fred McGriff, Mark Wohler's up in the Atlanta bullpen. Rodriguez, the fourth pitcher employed by the Giants. Roa went an inning, allowed a hit, everything else is zero. Rodriguez is one of those payer players that was in that big trade going to Florida with Gary Sheffield, the one where San Diego got Hoffman, Martinez, and Ruben, three pitchers. Lofton has had a typical night. Two out of three with a walk, a stolen base, two runs scored. He has been better than sliced bread. 451. Rodriguez has kind of traveled the U.S. He's from out this way, Skip, uh, in El Monte, California. Went to school in Tennessee. He is now an Atlanta resident. Lives down in our area in Duluth. That's right. I saw him. Ran into him at a Georgia Tech game. A football game. Last fall. Oh, and one the count. It's even now at a ball and a strike. Coming into the day, Lofton was second in hitting to Larry Walker, who was hitting 484. We don't know how he did that. Down that left field line, but right at Bond. Roy lost it in the lights, but he held on, one out. He, he caught that in self defense. He stayed with that a long time, too. Because you want a bail right along here, you've got to be thinking, this is going to hit me right between the eyes. Kept the glove up, and at the last second, it hit the glove. I'm not sure he caught that. He might have been shielding himself with the glove. He just happened to have it hit the glove. It might have looked him up. Yeah. One out, 
Michael Tucker, the batter. He is two out of four again with a run scored. Strike on the outside corner. The one thing that always concerned you about the Braves in the past, or concerned me, was their lack of speed. That is no longer the case. When Tucker's in the game and you have those two jackrabbits at the top of the order. I remember Chipper Jones said last year the one thing that he wanted to improve on was he wanted to run more. He already has five steals. Foul to the screen. One and two to the count. Looking ahead to the giant half of the ninth inning, it will be Bonds, Kent, and Snow. The first three against apparently Mark Wolers. He's not up just for the fun of it, so you have to assume he's coming in. Balecki was brilliant. Two innings, one hit, two strikeouts. He did his job. Tucker stays alive. Rodriguez, two and one, a 2.25 earned run average. The league hitting 185 against him coming into this game. Two pitch. Look out. Two and two, the count. That he had to work so hard to get out of the way of that shows you how long he stays in on left handers. He does not bail and head toward first. The two two pitch. Here you go. Line drive off a breaking ball into right field. That'll fall for a hit. Third hit of the night for Michael Tucker again. And that's standard operating procedure for most pitchers. Bust you inside and then come back with the breaking ball. But the same reason that caused him to almost get hit with that pitch is the same thing that allowed him to stay in there and hit that breaking ball. Here comes the rain again, and it's coming pretty good. But they'll try to play on through here now, I would think. Chipper stands in. He is... 0 for 3, he scored a run and driven one in. He has a sacrifice fly to his credit. <laughs> At the knees, outside edge, 0 and 1. You were talking about Tucker being off to a good start. It's six times he has three hits this year. Three hits in a game. Chipper tried to pull an outside pitch, didn't get it. 0 and 2. Contain himself, took off a little too soon. That's sort of got a guessing happy, game. Yeah, he got happy feet, and Rodriguez kind of helped him by coming up, holding a little bit. And that's one of those automatic outs at second, the ball beats you, and you're gone. Tucker now one of two in the stolen base department. And the 0 2 to Chipper, low and inside, a ball and two strikes. Brave Jerome Walton back on the disabled list. I think it's a groin problem with uh, Baltimore. He was hitting the ball well too. I thought he had seven straight hits the other day. Mm -hmm. Hard time staying healthy. The one-two pitch. Struck him out. Inning over. Chipper goes down swinging. Rodriguez gets through the ninth in good shape. One hit, no runs, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Giants. They trail four to nothing. A couple of 
changes for Atlanta. Andrew Jones in right field. Mark Wolers is the pitcher. They flip flop. Wolers bats second. Jones bats ninth. Hopefully Andrew nothing against him, but hopefully he won't have any more in this game. Wolers will try to finish it up as the Braves enjoy a four nothing lead. And the other baseball in the American League, Minnesota beat Oakland five three. Steve Avery in Boston over Cleveland eight two. Baltimore kept the White Sox on the skids three two. Yankees hammered Milwaukee ten two. In the ninth, Anaheim leads Toronto 6-5 in the bottom of the eighth. Seattle 5-1 over Kansas City in the National League. The Reds lost to the Mets 7-2. Montreal beat the Cubs 5-1. Colorado 13-4 over Florida in the eighth. St. Louis 3-2 over Los Angeles. And in the eighth, Houston handling San Diego 6-1. Here, Barry Bonds leads things off in the ninth inning. He is one for three. Mark Wolers goes to work and a ground ball to first. One pitch. One out. The Griff takes it himself. And Bonds is retired. Well, you said earlier that's where you like Bonds is leading off an inning with nobody on, and that's how you like Bonds. A one pitch easy ground. And here is Jeff Kent. Kent is 0 for 3. These guys have been red hot. The Braves have cooled them down tonight. Tom Glavin will try to continue the trend tomorrow, weather permitting. And then we'll charter home on Delta and get ready for the Padres. Over the weekend at the ballpark, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. But they have played this ball game tonight similar to the way they have been winning. They haven't, they've only given up two earned runs. It's just that they haven't gotten the three and a half or four that they normally get. And their defense has let them down for one right. of the very few times this year. There's two earned runs. So they're only hitting about 245 as a team and they're not scoring a ton of runs, but they can't, you can't give them away when you're not scoring any. One ball, no strikes, the count. One out, nobody aboard. It's one and one. This is one of those games, sort of strange to this point, in that the Giants never have really threatened, except well, maybe one time in the third inning they had a couple on with two out. Other than that, they, they haven't knocked on the door at all. It's raining rather vociferously at the moment. You saw that 99 up there. That's because it doesn't go any higher. All the way to the screen. That one overpowered Eddie Perez. Two balls and a strength. So Barry Bonds came into the game hitting 250 and he'll go out of the game hitting 250. Yeah. On the corner, two and two. He had a little zip on that one. Clark needs a good outing too. He struggled in Colorado. Quite uncharacteristic of him, and I think if you're if you're any pitcher, but especially a reliever, you like to get back out there as quickly as you can, and you like to have a good performance. The 2-2 pitch here it is. Chased a high fastball, didn't get it. Two up. So Waller seems to be back on the track, which is not a surprise. 99 miles an hour with climbing speed. There's no way he's going to catch up with it. Watch this uppercut swing. If he hits that, he would have hit it right up the chimney. Two out for J.T. Snow. You may remember his dad, Jack, was an outstanding football player for the Los Angeles Rams. Good wide receiver. Fastball high. Braves one out from victory. And it would make them three and one on this trip, so it would guarantee a good trip no matter the outcome tomorrow and it would give them a four game lead in the Eastern Division. There's that high cheese again. One and one. Snow tonight is 0 for 2 with a walk. Rollers is one pitch away perhaps from closing the deal. The Giants will be 13 and 4, and the Braves 14 and 4 if the Braves can record one more out. 
Glenn Allen Hill is on deck. Splitter gets him and the game is over. So Wolders gets him one, two, three. He does not get a save for the Braves had a four run lead. But more importantly, the Braves get a win. That's the important thing. Four nothing is the final score. And they used a plan that they have worked to perfection. Some speed in the front end of our batting order. Kenny Lofton right there for his performance tonight. A pair of hits, a double, a single, a stolen base, and two of the four runs scored. He's our auto zone player of the game. That's Kenny Lofton. Braves win it four to nothing. We'll be back to give you the rest of the totals right after this.